Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about limits of infinite sequences. All right, so just to begin the discussion, remember we were talking about sequences. Input uh, typically starts with uh, one and then it increases by one. Uh, so an integer uh, increase one, two, three, four. Those are the inputs, outputs. <clears throat> In this case, would be y are the terms of the sequence. Uh, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. So what I want you to do is to write a rule and then tell me what y is approaching. I'm going to pause here. All right, so the rule is 10 to the n. And we see that as n continues to get larger, uh, the function is approaching infinity. All right, so y is approaching infinity as n gets bigger and bigger. All right, so let's talk about some math language, and I want to review some of the notation with you so that you understand uh, <clears throat> what this limit uh, idea is and how it's written uh, in shorthand. So limit is abbreviated as LIM, and the limit of the function that we talked about, 10 to the nth power, as <clears throat> in the bottom part of the limit or underneath the limit, it says as n goes to infinity <clears throat> is some value. So the limit of... 10 to the n as n goes to infinity is or approaches some value. In this case, it is approaching or going to infinity. <clears throat> All right, so I ask my uh, students in my class to make sure that they write this down uh, just as a reference in case they get stuck or are not sure what this new math language looks like or means or is asking them to do. So it's asking you to evaluate the limit of this function as n goes to some value. All right, so <clears throat> let's take another look at another uh, sequence. n uh, input again is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so increasing by 1, starting with 1. Output terms 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 1 thirty second. So I want you to write a rule. Uh, what is y approaching as a sequence, and can we write this as a limit? So take a moment to complete those tasks. All right, so the rule is y is equal to 1 half to the n. Uh, the limit as n goes to infinity for the rule 1 half to the power of n is going to be equal to 0. So you can see the value of y gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's approaching or going to 0. So the limit is equal to 0 in this case. All right. So the next question, find the limit of sine of 1 over n as n goes to infinity. I'll let you think about this for a moment. All right, so let's think about what happens as n gets bigger and bigger, 1 over n gets smaller and smaller, and so that value is going to 0. So as 1 over n goes to 0, sine of 1 over n goes to 0. And we can say the limit of n of sine, excuse me, the limit of sine of 1 over n as n goes to infinity uh, is the same as a sine of 0, which is going to be equal to 0. So the limit of sine of 1 over n as n goes to infinity is equal to 0. All right, let's evaluate the same limit now for cosine of 1 over n as n goes to infinity. And you can see with the same logic as 1 over n goes to 0, uh, cosine of 0, or cosine of 1 over n goes to 1. So the limit of cosine of 1 over n as n goes to infinity is going to be equal to 1. All right, so now let's talk about limits in general and uh, values for geometric sequences where we have some uh, value of r, some ratio uh, taken to the power of n. And so let's uh, establish some parameters around the value of r. We can create some rules, not so much that you can memorize, but just so you get a feel for what's happening uh, for the different values of r. So we're going to say if r, absolute value of r is less than 1, then the limit is going to approach 0. So you can think of <clears throat> an xy axis and the x axis here <clears throat> and as the value of r uh, if it's a fraction or between 0 and 1 as an absolute value uh, it goes to some power as n increases that if we could plot this it would look something like this so we can see that this value is approaching 0 now if r was negative we'd have one value here and then another value here and it would go back and forth but still uh, 
the value would approach zero from both sides. And so we're going to say that the limit is still zero. Now, if r is greater than one, all right, we can see what's going to happen is the value is going to get bigger and bigger at an exponential rate. Okay, and the same applies for if r is less than or equal to negative one. Let's say if it's less than negative one, <clears throat> we're going to see that uh, the value is going to get more and more negative at a greater rate, so exponentially decreasing. And then if n is equal to negative 1, then we're going to alternate back and forth uh, as this value will be equal to 1 or negative 1. And so this limit does not uh, exist in either uh, if r is greater than 1 or if r is less than or equal to negative 1. All right, so we'll take an example for each. Uh, I have a value of r negative 1 half to the n. It's going to be equal to 0, 3 to the n. As I saw it's going to be exponentially uh, increasing. And then r is less than, uh, uh, excuse me, r is less than negative 1. You see negative uh, 2 to the n will end up with values that go uh, back and forth <clears throat> uh, across the uh, x-axis that are going to be moving towards both positive and negative infinity at the same time. And so uh, that limit uh, is, does not exist. All right, so now we're going to move on. We're going to talk about finding limits of rational functions. <clears throat> and uh, I'll walk you th through the first problem, and then you're going to be able to find uh, the limits of these rational functions. I know it looks complicated, but if we break it down, we talk about what's happening uh, in this function. We can see that there is a definite limit. Uh, for this rational function. All right. So what you're going to do uh, in these cases is you're going to divide both the numerator and denominator by the highest power of n that occurs in the denominator. And you can see the highest power of n in this case is n squared. So we're going to divide each uh, term in the numerator and denominator by uh, n squared. All right. So n squared over n squared plus 1 over n squared, 2n squared over n squared, minus 3n over n squared. And what we end up with is 1 plus 1 over n squared divided by 2 minus 3 over n. So uh, let's talk about the two terms here, 1 over n squared and 3 over n. As n goes to infinity, this value is going to get smaller and smaller. It's going to go to 0. The same for 3 over n. As n goes to infinity, this value is going to go to 0. And so we can, uh, in fact, replace these values with 0 as n goes to infinity. Uh, because the limit for those specific values, those values are going to be equal to zero. And so they have less and less of a bearing on or an effect on these values because they're approaching zero as a value. And we can say that the limit of this rational function then goes to what is represented by these two values, one uh, and two. Uh, and we can think of it another way. If we go back to the original function, right, as n gets bigger and bigger, uh, the n squared values of values in 2n squared, because they have a higher degree exponent than these other two uh, terms, means that these are getting bigger and bigger at a faster rate than uh, at least the constant in 3n. And so they're in effect overpowering really the importance of these two values, uh, where these two values kind of drop away in importance relative to n squared and 2n squared. And what we're left with is just uh, n squared over 2n squared. And since n squared and n squared, n squared over n squared reduced to 1, we're left with 1 over 2 as a value. Okay, so uh, why don't you try this one on your own, 3n squared plus 5n over 8n squared, using the method that I just gave to you. Let's see what you come up with. All right, so you divide by n squared, the highest power of the variable uh, is n squared and the denominator. We divide by n squared, we're left with 3 plus 5n over n squared, which is 5 over n. <clears throat> and as n goes to infinity, this value goes to 0, we're left with 3 over 8. Same thing for this problem, I'll pause for a moment. Right, 2n to the 4th over n to the 5th, I'm left with uh, 2 over n to the uh, 2 over n, and I'm left with 6 here. As n goes to infinity, 2 over n goes to 0. So I'm left with 0 over 6 or 0. All right, find the limit of negative 1 to the power of n. 
All right, so we kind of went through this before when we uh, graphed the value of r, which is negative 1 in this case, uh, really briefly. And we saw that the value of uh, this function, the sequence, as uh, n increases, it goes back and forth between negative 1 and 1. So you can see that there is no limit. Uh, it just goes, varies back and forth indefinitely between 1 and negative 1. So we say that there is no limit uh, to this particular function. All right, so now let's talk about convergence and divergence. So we're going to talk about sequences here, and it's important to dis distinguish now between sequences and series. Uh, we're specifically talking about limits of sequences or functions. And so we're going to say that a sequence converges if it hones in on a given or a specific number, including zero. All right, so one half to the n, limit of one half to the n as n goes to infinity is going to be equal to zero. Values get smaller and smaller and smaller. They're approaching zero, so the limit is zero. We say it's divergent, uh, sequences are divergent, if there's no specific number that the uh, sequence hones in on, meaning it alternates between some values, it approaches positive or negative infinity, then it's said to diverge. So the example we had in the past was negative one, uh, positive one, negative one, positive one. So limit of negative one to the power of n as n goes to infinity. It's not honing in on any values. It's going back and forth across the x-axis. Uh, there's no specific value that it's moving towards. Limit of 10 to the n. So this is, I believe, our first example, 10 to the n. Then goes to infinity is infinity. And so we say that if it's positive or negative infinity, or both in this case, then uh, the value uh, or the uh, sequence diverges. So converging on a specific number, hones on on a specific number, diverges, doesn't have a specific number inclusive of uh, positive or negative infinity if it approaches both of those or either. And we say that the uh, limit, uh, the sequence diverges. All right, so uh, that is it for this edition of uh, Ott and Math. I can give you these as classwork problems for you to do, and you can figure these out on your own. In fact, let me give you, you can pause here, and I'm going to give you the answers for them. And that'll be it for this edition of Ott and Math and limits of infinite sequences. So here is the answer. All right, that's it. Come back and uh, join us next time when we talk about uh, sums of infinite geometric uh, series in the next edition of Otten Math.